This video is going to go over what made these heroic or these zero hour exotic missions so great. So as of today's tweet, Bungie has confirmed there's two old exotic missions coming back into the rotator playlist. Well, they'll, they'll be going there, won't they? They haven't said which ones they are, but I can pr we can pretty much all of us say it's going to be zero hour and whisper. There is a chance it could be bad juju. Let's hope it's not bad juju because that exotic mission wasn't very good compared to these two. So let's hope it, let's hope they give fan service and it's zero hour and whisper. So this video is going to focus on the zero hour mission. If this video does well, then I'll do a whisper mission. Make sure you subscribe, etc., etc. But this video is just going to go over each encounter, which it's all subject to change, by the way. It was a time-based mission back then. It probably will still be time-based, but... The timer might be changed, they might alleviate it, they might not. Let's hope they keep it the same, probably, but we have power crept it since then, let's just see. So, like I said, this is going to break down each encounter, etc. Um, and what made Zero Hour so good. So, what loadout are we using here? So, this is an old video, by the way, a few points. It's Zero Hour Heroic, which was more difficult than the normal version, so this is the highest difficulty. Uh, and there was no fallen mods used, so there's no infinite heavy. You used to be able to have infinite heavy with grenades. That's no longer a thing now. They remove fallen mods. They sunset them. So you got mountaintop, a scenic bite, a bow, and then anarchy, right? Weird controversial. So a blast from the past. So you would load into this into the tower section, right? And you basically had to go through these encounters as quickly as you could, really. You had to strategize each enemy types and 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 prepare for them. Because you can't mess around and sit back. Because you're on a 20 minute timer, which sounds like a lot of time, but it isn't a lot of time, not for a mission like this. So you would strategize how you actually fought each enemy type. It wouldn't be just, I'm gonna go and shoot ads. It would be like, right, near to the back, anarchy trap down, mountain top, the ads in front of us, try and get some area effect damage in, then kill the marauders, then focus the snipers, and notice they're all orange bars. Barely any red bar enemies, ma mainly chunk enemies that you had to strategize killing. You've got a heal and to survive against the marauders. If you didn't, you would die. Then we get another nade charged, and then clean up the rest of the ads. So see how there's an actual strategy for each encounter, because you need to. That's what I like about this. It's not just a case of right, anything sort of works, you can do what you want. With this mission, because of the impost timer, for solo at least, in team in, for teams it was a little different. But for solo, you, you had to self-impose a strategy for each encounter. I like strategy, have you noticed? I'm a massive RPG type of player, so I like strategy. I don't even like first person shooters that much, but I like them enough if the strategy in them, which there was a hell of a lot of strategy, especially in this mission. So we then near the ads to our right, then focus on the heavy shank that we see in front of us first, and then we start killing snipers. There's three heavy shanks and they're tanky. So we need to strategize how we kill them. We use mountaintop here, finish off the snipers, and then just start working on the snipers that are up top. The Arsenic Bites put in so much work, by the way. Almost two shot orange bars. In incredible damage. I still have this boat today, like I was saying before. Then we'll get a... Then I've just got my nade back, right? So then we're going to use a nade for the second chunk. Right? And then a bit of mountain top. We could have... We do end up anarchy in, actually. Then another nade for the third... We actually slightly missed that nade, but that's fine. And he's dead. Pick up ammo, move on. So you see how everything's like, do this, do that, do that. Rather than you just dilly-dallying and looking down at the last city. You can't be doing that stuff, not on a solo flawless. So that's the plaza. Now the hangar. So the hangar was all snipers. And then you had some servitors that would tether enemies. So... You needed to clear out, again, same thing, these enemies as quickly as you can, right? Getting a double kill with mountaintop would speed this bit up if you hit your mountaintops, which we missed one or two, which actually ends up meaning that we lose time a little bit. But if you can get double kills like that right off the rip, then that actually speeds the thing up, like so. But this run was by no means perfect. I can't remember, I can't remember, we're doing this season, this was a season of the Werby run in this case. 
Sometimes the, the, the footage will actually skip. This is because of PS4 Pro days. So just don't worry about it. It was a bug for back then. We don't need to worry about that now. That was a bug we're recording. Most of you won't even know that, but that was a thing. We have a server which we end up using on one of the servitors, right? Because it's so valuable. You would think using a super on the tank would be more viable, but actually not. Because of how difficult the servitors were and tanky, right? It was actually in your interest to get some, uh, to use a super. Other classes, a Void Titan was really good for this, especially Order the Commander, Mid Tree, Sentinel, right, with the old tree system, with the Detonator build, with Void Wall Grenades, would absolutely destroy the tank legs, because the tank, you gotta realize with tanks is some nades can get multiple hits on certain legs, on the legs itself. So area effect grenades do massive damage. Vortex does, but I think Void Wall does even more, especially the detonator one. So heart of him most like Void Titans are gonna be really good in this. Trust me, they still will be. Because in actual fact, Void Titans only gotten better since then. It's probably not as good as maybe some other classes, but it's still gonna melt this. Whatever melts tanks, because there's loads of tanks to deal with this. Now we'll do a bit of anarchy on the on the tank. Use another nade. I'm going to push up to the exit. Hopefully that grenade kills the tank, which it has. Now the next little area, you want to get a nade down in here. So whatever you run and get a nade first, do area effect damage, and then just go in with your with your heavy and whatnot. You can use a bit of heavy. I don't use too much heavy. Obviously, it depends. I mean, well. There isn't four mods in the game now, but in an actual run, you wouldn't use our much heavy. Now, the, the debate is, would you use an eager edge sword on the puzzle? Because assuming that you're going to use the eager edge sword, and then you don't have a heavy weapon, but there's such thing as Strand Titan. Strand Titan might melt zero hour. I don't want Strand Titan to do it. I hope Strand Titan doesn't. But the way Strand Titan set up with Navigator, it's going to melt everything, isn't it? So you probably just go Eager Edge, Navigator, some special weapon, whatever, or a primary even, and then just melt things. We'll have to see how that works out, though. So same thing, another heavy shank. We'll just melt down the ads as quickly as we could. And then this, this section's just more ads, but obviously we want to go through it as quickly as we can. So let's skip to the actual jumping puzzle. Now, for normal and, and heroic, there was two different routes. For me, because I'm a weirdo, I preferred heroic. And I'm not just saying that because I, I'm, you know, joking. I actually mean it. The route for heroic was easier jumps for me. The route was different. Normal, I just didn't like it. Now, see how I jumped down here. You need to jump down here like this because you're going to get confused when you, get, when you jump down because there's a switch and there's an exit. So if you jump down in that manner... Top left is the switch. But once you've gotten the top left, the opposite side or the opposite corner is exit point. That's a good way of remembering it. Just jump down in the correct manner. Don't do any 360 turns before you jump down so you don't lose where the, you don't lose where the switch is, because then you've lost time. You need to get the jumping puzzle on point. If you at, at if you at all die, you are probably gonna not do this. If it's a 20 minute timer still. Back then it was a 20 minute timer. So they're probably going to make it 25 minute timer. I feel so that's what they're going to do with it. Because they give presage extra time. Now look at this jump here. On a hunter and Titan this wasn't too bad. But on a Warlock it was bad. Because when you jump you would hit your head. See how you hit your head there and you would lose your jump. I jumped in advance knowing that. So I would cancel my jump and then reactivate it. Look. it that's a top tip. Like for Warlocks who complain about floating and stuff. Cancel jump, reactivate. It's an advanced tip. I don't go over movement videos. Because I don't feel I need to. Because they're in my actual runs. So you do see a lot of videos about movement 101. How to master Warlock jumps. Are you joking? Just master it anyways and don't talk about it. You're not an advanced player just because you know how to jump on a Warlock. Just learn the tips. And that's it. You don't need to go about and tell people advanced 101 movement tech. It isn't tech, it's just knowing how the jump works. It's, it's not too uh, difficult. 
Now this, the outside jumping section, one of the best sections. This little pipe will fall off. Be careful of it. And this little, let's call them, what would we call these? I don't know. These platforms will disengage when you jump on them. Some of them. Some of them are solid. Some of them aren't. Look at this. You hear the noise? That means it, you would fall off map. The corner jump. Now on a warlock, it's real easy for me. Hunter, it would also be really easy. Um, Titan, same. You just float around the corner, basically. That is it. This is a really hard part if you don't know what you're doing. This is how you do the jump as follows. Wait for this flipper. That's what we'll call him, the flipper. And then you'll jump right across to this one because that one, uh, you, you're actually skipping one of the flippers. And then you'll jump right across, out the way out, and then in. Boom, done. Three jumps and done. It saves you so much time, 10 to 20 seconds if you do that. All the time savings. This is like Mario Kart. You're doing a race. You're trying to get a good time. I don't know why, like, there's people with Destiny 2, like, have a big issue with time saves and stuff like this. You need... Why not? It's part of the game. I'm going to talk about time activities versus non-timed non activities at the, end of, at the end of the run. It's a real important point because Zero is such a good example of, of it being a part of it. We'll go through the vent jump on the pillars as follows. It's really easy to die here. If you die, you're not, you're not completing the run. If it's 25 minute timer, which I... I think it will be 25 minutes, so if it was, it will be, I'll be having 15 minutes at this point. I think that's probably what it's going to be. Now, the fan section. The fan section, no matter what, will kill you if you hit the fans. So, a Titan Lion Rampants is really good in this section. Stompies Hunters can use them, but I never, if I'm being honest, I didn't use Stompies for this bit. I didn't like it. I would bump myself and often kill myself with Stompies because it was too much of a jump. It was too much of a boost. When all you just needed to do is have good control on the hunter jump. The warlock, we make a mistake and get bounced off because of physics. That This is actually a bad rotation. So that's a huge mistake that could have cost a death there. And it didn't. We were lucky. And you just keep going down the walls. You slide and think of it as sliding down the walls. We then open the vents. Now, there's a notch boss here, so look out for it. You should know what a notch boss is if you've been playing since 10 years. If you don't, shame on you for not knowing what that is. So look, there's a notch boss here, and you don't realize how bad it is. I know because I've been killed by this wall a lot. The reason I counter this is, how I counter this is by jumping earlier on this platform. Do you see it? Jumping out earlier and then over. The Warlock jump lasts so long. Like on a Hunter, I would do this as well. This is where Stompies, you do need Stompies. You can get across. I, saying that, you can get across with a sword well. You can. But I would still probably put Stompies on for this bit on a Hunter. On a Titan, you're zooming. Titan's got actually best jump in the game. But that's obviously a topic for another video. But Warlock's probably second best. Hunter's worst. In D2 at least. At least, I think. For PvE, not for P for PvP, it's actually got the best jump in the game, but the worst for PvE. So here's Trevor, the, the main star of this. It's such a good... So Trevor was a boss in the jump puzzle thing. This is the diagram of, of Trevor. So this is where you enter. This is the exit. Your goal is to activate all four switches and get to the exit. However, there's multiple ways of doing this, but there was a rotation done so that you would avoid Trevor at all times. You'd only see him once. Isn't that crazy? Once or twice. You, I think you see, see him at the end as well, but only briefly. So that's the puzzle. Keep it in mind, right? And I'll, and I'll take you through it. So we jump down. We wait for Trevor. This is the critical aspect. If they change Trevor's rotation, I will, I will lose my mind. But they probably won't. They'll keep it the same. There's too much to do. It's too much to record his, puzzle, uh, to record his, his uh, AI path. Pattern, but we'll see. So you go left first, right? And then you take a second left. There's there's actually mini places to hide, but you don't need to do any of that stuff because, well, assuming it's the same rotation. Activate switch. Run past, not just stop. Run past, activate. Wait for the arc shield to go down, and then we're going to get the second switch on left-hand side, like the, the, the graph I just showed you. Look, there's middle there. Middle was a awkward jump. Often I would die in mid uh, when you go from left to right. I'll point it out. There's an awkward jump there. 
activate second switch go back on yourself not round if you go around you've messed the rotation up so you've got to actually do it exactly as you see it bunny hop to pillar and sort of bunny hop to the, all of them because you can hit your head on another pillar above you <clears throat> and knock you off map it's happened to me loads so that's another jump that's probably better on a hunter than it is warlock and probably better on titan as well now we're on right side bottom right switch took we back on ourselves, wait for our shield to go down, and then we hit the top right switch, and that's how you do Trevor's puzzle. Like I said, I don't think they're going to change this. However, it would be a nice change of pace if they did change the rotation on them to keep people guessing. So they might do, but I'm probably 80% certain they won't. To wait for our shield to go down. And then head for exit. You'd have to sometimes you could skip that. See that arc shield? We just skipped it. You didn't have to, but it would be a 10 second um, gain. You, you need to look at the whole course of the run. Like you say to me, okay, 10 seconds saved on tower hanger, big deal. 10 seconds saved on tower bars, a big deal. Oh, yeah, it is. Because over the course of the run, you've saved 30 seconds for boss fight. Yes, it is. Seconds count in this. Remember, it's heroic, not normal. You can actually jump up, not wait for the lift. Like, you can do a jump skate up there, but I was never somebody that was an advocate of it. There's a 20 second time saving or so if you do it. Physics used to kill us. It doesn't now, so you don't need to do what I'm doing here. You can just zoom all the way down and you won't die. We used to die to physics, which is why we use the hit our head on the roof strat. So this is the vault room. You just come over, you look for symbol. You didn't see it there, there's a symbol. You just melee the door and it opens. So recognize this room. This is Hall of Champions. This is basically similar to what like Hall of Champions is. That's why I also think they'll definitely bring Zero Hour back because they've got that as a social space type deal. And it's a very similar room built. Right, now here's the floor puzzle. Now the floor puzzle will kill you if you stepped on the wrong floor panel. Right, you can see. However, there was different weak, weak rotations. There was a void, arc, solar weak type thing. So this is the void rotation, arc rotation, solar rotation. I believe they'll, they'll keep this the same as well. They probably should do. So what rotation did I have this, this week? So we're going to the end panel. So we have solar. Uh, not solar, what am I about arc? We have the arc rotation. So we would just do the arc rotation. If you die here, like I can say, you're done. Look at our time left. Six minutes, 35. And I'm using meta. I'm using mount top, anarchy. I am, I'm not, granted, I haven't spammed anarchy in this room. When, once watching this back, probably could have used way more anarchy than what I did. But I was probably just being more conservative on this run. And I probably knew that I would do it based on a six minute time I left. Look at that, six minutes for the boss. See, this is what this is the thing. I'll talk about it at the end with the time thing. My, my opinion on time-based activity. So you drop down right away and then back up, right? And then start working on some of the ads first. That will be your first part of call rather than trying to do DPS to the boss, solo-wise at least. Back then, this is how we did it. Strand Titan Strat nowadays might be different. Well, it'd be entirely different, but assuming everything's the same. So we clear out all the ads with the bow one shot in most of them right then we push up a little bit clean out the rest of the enemies then we would start damage but we wouldn't do massive damage and we're going to do two anarchy first then nova the big servitors right that was critical then we'll charge a nade and then fire it on the boss i know the footage skipped there again that's ps4 pro days but we we've we've actually done damage to both servitors both of them are still alive, but no big deal. We've actually, we're multitasking better this way. We could just, like I say, kill the first one, but on a Warlock, it wasn't as critical to do it that way. On a Void Titan, it was more critical to do it like that. But on this playstyle, because we got Anarchy on, this would also work with Riverhall, by the way, is we're multitasking all VIP targets and the Shanks. See, there would also be Shanks, shielded Shanks, all across the room. Right? The servant is dead at the back, but there's still loads of shanks. And there were different elements. 
You used to swap between Solar, Ark and Void to get it done. I don't believe on this run I did though. I think because they, they've done some change with the shields. I might swap four, let's see. I can't remember. There's actually vehicles as well, right? So deconstruct might be something, you know? Uh, there's loads of vehicles. There's the turrets, there's the tanks. Um, and then we're just gonna melt this tank here. So we're deciding to melt one of the sides. We're gonna leave turrets till end. Forget about turrets at this point because they're too di they're far too threatening to deal with whilst we've got other enemies alive. Then we go for the second tank. We've got plenty of anarchy for. We've got a nade. We're gonna use that. Get a reload and then just mount up. Snipers are really good in this, by the way. Like they're really good. Whisper the worms obviously good in this, but like a well rolled legendary. Sniper will do well in this as well, like your succession, when that, like the new roll, or you can just use your old roll. But more to the point, supremacy, I'll probably be having to go with supremacy on this, on the tanks and stuff. So look at this piece of cover, we've got lots of cover in mid, make sure that you utilise it. Look at loading times, loading times, loading times, Space for look. We have actually swapped both, so remember, you, you say if, you, if the equipment lock's not on, then you see you can do this. We're going to swap to a solar bow. This will save you time in the end because of the elemental explosion when you match a shield. Hey, shields being important in PvE endgame. Clip it. They're not even important anymore. Bring back match game. Bring back match game. People won't want it because people like to do perm ability, all strand weapons. What? So boring. No, let's match. Let's let's match shields to weapons, right? It gives you a reason to keep Void Arc Solar in your vault, to have a Void Scout or an Arc Pulse. It gives you a reason for all that stuff. If you don't have shields, a thing that you need to spec for in Endgame, then elements become pointless almost. Apart from using it to, to link with a build. But that's not the only reason why you should have an element on a gun, is it? Now we're gonna do some good damage to the boss. Keep shanks alive. Keep a few shanks alive at the back. As if you kill them all, the ones at the front, they respawn more. We'll do a super here. So we're deciding to melt the boss. Keep spamming our abilities. Down to eight anarchy. What time we got? 147. So even with meta, we're still sort of like running out of time. Look at this loadout. Look at that loadout menu. We're going to swap to Arsenic to get the shields. It's so worth swapping elements. Like at the, or back in the day it was. Now we've got turrets to melt. Actually, no, you don't need to melt the turrets. There you go. So you actually don't need to kill them for the um, mission complete. Let's see if that's the same. I'm not sure if it will be or not. I actually forgot that was a thing. So now you've saw the mission. 1 minute 30 left. 20 minute mission. So... What did what did you just watch? You just watched where we strategized each encounter for time efficiency. Let's stay away, away, away let's stay away from the word speedrun. Time efficiency. There's not I don't think there's a problem with players trying to be time efficient in D2, especially with the speed tech you've got nowadays, especially with with the movement abilities you've you've got. So being pressured by time results in you strategizing to clear out rooms differently. If there's no time, there is no effort required. There is no need to complete as quickly because you have an unlimited amount of time. And who said it? The Paul, the Paul Tassies of the world, like him, complaining about presage timers and stuff and wanting to look at the scenery. Come on now. Like, he's not like, don't listen to what he says, right? Because that's completely false. You want to go back to timed activities for certain things in the game, and these are a good example of it, the whisper and the zero hour. Take away the timer and zero hour heroic is just whatever, right? Because you've got as much time as you want. Even for fire teams, people would struggle to do this in a fire team. Right, but this forced you as a player to think about your loadouts more. 
you know, maybe you're not running the right loadout is the reason why you're not getting the, the runs that you should be. I'm just saying that time adds pressure and it's an interesting dynamic. Don't get me wrong, if they go too low with the time like they did for the exotic mission during the season of the, um, season of the Deep, for the scout rifle, like, was that a 10 minute timer? That was too short. It should have been 50. I, I can't mind if it was 10 minutes or 15 minutes. It was too, it was too short regardless. That was all, okay, that was overtuned. But I believe 20 minutes is a perfect time for these types of missions, for all of them. Give them a 20 minute gen, gen, generic timer. Presage, Presage got 25 minutes now, I think, on the higher difficulty. So that's how they should balance it. Normal difficulty has no timer. The heroic version or legend version, whatever you want to call it, should have a timer. It should possess a timer to maintain its difficulty somewhat. We have power crept the game. The only way to balance it, I think, is to put a timer on there. If you don't put... Like, look at the name of the mission, Zero Hour. It's saying that you have zero hours left, lest it's imminent defeat. It's even got it in its name. You can't not have it a race to complete type mission it's got to be it's got to have the timer it will do i'm just wondering if it's going to be 25 minutes or 20 because they've done that with presage let's just hope it's probably 20 minutes still because we out power crept um what it used to be so that was the review of the heroic zero hour mission hope you enjoy thank you